So your expectation going into this winter, walking into January, is what? what what's it going to look like so, around the country? Right. So if we see this proliferation of what we're seeing in the Northeast, which we fully expect to, there's no reason to think that with holiday travel and just previous surges that we won't see proliferation of a fitter variant around the country, that if as we walk into January, we will likely continue to see hospitalizations in the over 70 age population, which is what we're seeing in New York, a, a, a sharp increase in that population's hospitalization group, especially because only about one in three of those people are vaccinated with an updated booster. We will see those hospitalizations continue to grow. As a result, deaths will continue to increase. It will not be as severe as previous surges where we saw hospitalizations in younger age groups. And that's likely because we do have some of that immunity that's holding from either vaccines, updated boosters, right. or infection-induced well, immunity. Or all so the let above. me ask you about this, though, because you said one in, th one in three will have not been vaccinated, or you're saying one in three will have been one vaccinated. One in three have and, been boosted. Sorry. Okay, and so what does yeah, that say to those who... So what does that say to those about, about getting boosted, though? Yeah, so this is... Uh, it's hard to kind of pound this uh, even further, but getting boosted matters. We now have multiple real-world evidence studies. We don't need just lab kind of hypotheticals, which is what we rested on before with some of the clinical data and preclinical data. We have real-world evidence that demonstrates that an updated variant, even in light of some of these variants that are recombinant and new to the United States and new to the world, that we would be able to have better antibody performance with an updated booster, period, plain and simple. So I think that there is no question anymore. And I think that the world is fatigued of hearing this. Right. But as you see the numbers going up, there's a reason well, to sound One of the, the things alarm. you do hear from some people is that I, I've heard, I've heard uh, folks, uh, old and young, say, you know what, not going to get boosted, but, you know, if I get it, I'll, I'll, I'll get Paxlovid. Right. Yeah. Well, that's, I, I will say that I've had a number of patients who have thought that myself. And they either have not been able to get the Paxlovid in time. So we do recommend that that gets started in the initial days of the infection. And then number two, Andrew, a lot of people are not kind of counting on whether they have normal renal, normal kidney function, a lot of medications that are, I think that some doctors are over kind of interpreting the contraindications that you can't get Paxlovid if you're on certain medications, but we know that we can hold those medications. But there's an art to this. And doing that during the holiday season when most people are traveling and not near their regular source of care, why is that a chance anybody wants to take? It's not worth it. When you think about the variants that are coming out of China uh, and elsewhere relative to the variants here, um, more contagious, more uh, dangerous, less dangerous? And, and long term, what yes. does this look like? Yeah, the long term is that this virus isn't done with us and that if we continue to be complacent in 2023, that in the long term, this will come back to bite us. It may be sooner than 2023, but it could be as soon as 2023. In terms of what's happening and unfolding in China, Andrew, a way to think about this is that is a population that is naive. That is a, just an incredible, wonderful Petri dish for any virus. So the virus does not need to get fitter or smarter in order to perform well in a population like China's. So if anything, the United States is the kind of environment where you will likely see more of these immune evading variants develop, meaning Again, we have a domestic problem. We need to keep an eye on what's happening in China for implications across the world. But that just speaks to, I think, what you pointed out earlier, CDC, better wastewater surveillance, and doing this on a global scale. We can't keep doing this in a right. patchwork, piecemeal fashion.